Hi everybody, this is uh, Chris Mayer from the official Fire Emblem Heroes subreddit and Discord server. I have a really popular guest here today, uh, Tiki and Naga. Hello, hello. Um, or should I say, hello, hello. <laughs> so leading in, the first thing I can ask is, uh, in terms of SAG, the professional jobs, was one of the first things you um, about Heather Locklear pilot doing some kind of banking hey, analyst work. I was. Terminology for that. I did. I did. I was still a banker at the time, and I didn't realize that um, I was going to end up being a voiceover. But my anime experience is what got me that job. Oh, really? Because okay. I knew how to dub. Do you have a special uh, SAG story? Like how you got into SAG? How I got into SAG? I did a radio commercial for a law firm in the very beginning of my career. Okay. Yeah, so at the time you could do an AFTRA commercial and then, then you got you had to pay, once you got your first AFTRA job, you could get it into SAG, but now there's SAG out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was there, how much of a timeline between that and anime? Were you already doing anime? No, no, I think it was maybe a year and a half. Okay, yeah. And then, so with Vampire Princess Mew, you, you auditioned for Mew. I did, I did. And then St. Tail. St. Tail. Um, and Joshua Seth is actually going to interview me. Um, oh, for his show, yes, yeah. but he didn't remember that that's where he met me. It oh. was like one of my first jobs <laughs> yeah. uh, in anime, and I was like, he's just like, no, I just liked you. I said, you do know that you were. And he says, was I a jerk? <laughs> it's like, no, you were really nice. He yeah. was really lovely. Well, speaking of um, larger characters, like Saint Tail, um, who do you think that you relate the most to, personally? Like, when, when um, I think it's four. I think definitely Rinto Saka. Um, you know, she grew up kind of without her father. She had to take care of herself. Um, was a little uppity. <laughs> um, went to a Catholic girls' school, so that's definitely me. Um, so Rinto Saka. I'm Tiki from Miraculous Ladybug because she just cheers you on, and I definitely feel like a marinette. You know, because we all do. We all feel like a hero 10% of the time, but what you do the other 90% is the awkward part, right? <laughs> um, Lifeline from Apex Legends. Um, I know what I'm doing. Uh, she looks like my nana, and I just, oh. and then my mother um, was a specialist in the military. Yeah. And, uh, so there's a lot of me in there. I do disaster relief. I feel like she represents both sides of my family with her freckles and just everything. Okay. Um, and Jade from Mortal Kombat. That was um, pretty big because I had been in a car accident and I'd broken my back, fractured several vertebrae, actually not broke my back. Um, but I had learned, I had been reading a book, um, a friend of mine, um, Josh had talked about neuroplasticity and like imagining and, and kind of reworking your brain into what was possible. And so when I would be in physical therapy, if you couldn't finish a, a rep, they would ask you to finish in your mind so oh. that you could get your mind used to waking up and learning how to lift your leg up or balance. And so I had just gotten off of uh, walking with a cane and I came into Jade Mortal Kombat and I was looking at this beautiful goddess on the screen and I would imagine myself fierce and strong and possessed you know that just oh. and I loved feeling like I wasn't broken yeah for sure do you think that you have a personal preference on working on a more dramatic character at the time? you know I did before my accident but then I became very funny I think I was always a little draw, um, but you can't take yourself seriously when the biggest thing that you celebrate all month is I put my pants on by myself. Yeah. Like I was so excited. You just have to. You get. I got through it with humor, mm -hmm. and so all of a sudden after my accident, I got better about 2018. I you know I did Princess Zanda and Jade and these like really fierce characters, but like on the other side was like Diane from Craig of the Creek. Diane. From Craig of the Creek, I love all things anime, games, and Slide the Ferret, pew pew! So there was this kind of, like, who gives a, <laughs> you know? I didn't have any Fs to give, and I started having fun with life. Because when you face death, you start realizing how precious life is. And I used to be so anxious and nervous all the time, because I was like, am I getting it right? Am I making everyone happy? And I thought, I don't want those to be my dying thoughts. Yeah, and it really being through probably the toughest time of my life helped me to reach where I'm at now, which is like the best time of my life. Yeah. Well, tying it in, I can tie that into, um, what were your thoughts on the fallen skin that Tiki got when she was in Oh, 
well, we've all been on a diet before, and uh, no, <laughs> um, I, it was hard to be mean because I had. She's like that that inner. You can do it, and so when I would play it, I'm like, ooh, was that too mean? And they'd say, go more mean, go more mean, yeah. and um, it was a little uncomfortable. But what I love about Miraculous is that it teaches us that there's a hero in all of us. But there's also a villain, mm-hmm. and we may think we're the hero of the story, uh, but you are someone's villain. And we get to to understand that we all have the capability of being both. And it helps to give grace and forgiveness, not only to other people that maybe were our bullies or our villains, but to ourselves when we make mistakes. Because we're all just thinking, you know. Yeah. Well, it's interesting talking about that because Tiki and Fire Emblem also has like an evil. She does. That, yeah. She does. But um, she just want to make, you know, like, so you've got Tiki and then you've got Tiki from Fire Emblem. And she just wants to make friends, right? And um, both times, um, and I realize now you're probably talking about Tiki from Fire Emblem. No, you're trying to find him. Because Tiki, from, she had like a, a, a weird thing where she's like eating and she's like, she's just ravenously hungry and mean. And I was like, but um, also Tiki from Fire Emblem, I think we all have that, that dark dragon side. And part of getting over the sadness caused by the people that hurt you the most when you were younger is understanding that you have that in you too. And we do. And I didn't want to become what had hurt me the most. And when we hold on to that hurt, we can kind of, there's a darkness that grows in us, like this anger and this lack of forgiveness. And it's not, it's dangerous when we keep it inside. Because we're all powerful. I love Tiki that way. She's adorable, but she's she's trying to keep it all in. And I think a lot of us are trying to hold on a second while they make announcements. That's okay. Um, I think that when we hold things in and we're not honest about what hurts us, who hurts us, um, our part that we may have played in it, it does grow and it can be very dangerous. And I think that's where the monster in all of us comes from, is unrequited love, unrecognized fear, um, and unforgiven anger. Do you have uh, totally different thoughts on um, whenever you get to the headspace to play Naga? Um, a similar thing? You know, I just she's older and much more serious, and they had her have this lower voice. And it, it was funny, she reminded me of, like, uh, Jade from Mortal Kombat, but much more refined or gentle, like... But she's still just as fierce. Yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, skin for Tiki that's been out so far? I like her legendary skins <laughs> for young Tiki. Um, uh, I kind of like them all. And honestly, they haven't changed much. I, I, the Choose Your Legend skin, I was like, oh, what's it going to be? And I have to be honest, I was like, it's going to It felt like me. It was like, it was like, I sometimes, I love leather jackets. You guys probably already know that. And I will have multiple leather jackets, but it's still the same look. <laughs> and I feel like that's how they've gone with TV. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. But still, it all looks good. So yeah, it looks thing. good. She has, it works. It works for her, right? Yeah. I did hear you say yesterday to someone that, um, for the British accent that you, you actually had one. My mother is from London and I was raised by my grandmother also who was British and probably spoke about like this a lot as a child, especially when they wanted me to have um, more proper speech. And then I just hung out in California for the last two, couple of decades, <laughs> um, about as American as they come. But yeah. it's it's a familiar voice, mm-hmm. most definitely, that I grew up with. And when it comes to um, all the directors for Fire Emblem, uh, is there any like funny story you have with Patrick or Oh, Patrick Sides, Wendy. Wendy's amazing. Patrick and I um, took a class together, and then he went off to school, and I was going to go to law school. And ironically, he didn't become a professor. I ended up not going to law school. The voiceover kept dragging us back. Um, we, it's neat to think that high school for me wasn't fun. Okay. <laughs> but I feel like voiceover and the community that we have here is the best high school. Yeah, like it's sure. a redo, right? Redux. Yeah. And I basically grew up with Patrick from like the last 20 years. 20 yeah. years, dude. <laughs> um, guys, anybody who uh, either is in the high school and you're suffering or it's your way out of it and you're still suffering, um, it gets better. You find your soul track. Mm-hmm. I think, well, speaking just for me too, um, anime especially, it's yeah. more of a chance to 
um, get over things because anime deals with things that American animation doesn't. I think it was important, and it's affected, I think, Western storytelling now. And you can see it, like, with Dark, you know, Superman, Dark Batman, like, these, the Dark Knight kind of vibe. That I remember when I did Rose and Maiden, and it was about a latchkey kid whose parents literally left them. Yeah. And then I did Green, and it was about a girl whose parents had literally left, like she's by herself. And I think a lot of us, whether we have parents or not, have felt somehow left alone, especially with this whole like cyberspace bill that can be so overwhelming, and our parents don't understand it, so you're alone in the world. And and I think that. I appreciate, you know, even reading later when they really address the situations with Sister Sakura and we're able to address harsh topics. And I think for some reason they were either unsavory or they didn't think, especially young people, that we could absorb them. But we're living them. So we could clearly uh, learn from them being in our stories. And you're right, anime uh, and Eastern storytelling doesn't look for black and white, good versus evil. It looks for just slightly different subsets of values, morals, and life situations, mm-hmm. and what we do with those. It's so important. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite roles of yours that I don't see anybody ever talk about, um, I'm not sure if you remember it much, but uh, Ein in the Phantom. Yes. That was just a I one-off do. Movie, yeah, it was. That was so unlike any other characters you usually do. It was. Yeah. I do like that. Again, it's just about... Sometimes people think it's a good choice, bad choice, but what if it's bad choice, worst choice? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you then? Right. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of uh, upcoming projects, of the, is there anything that you can say we talk about? Um, obviously, we have more Apex coming. Um, I can't talk about what it is, but yes. Uh, I have some exciting games. I got cast in three games this last month oh, wow. that are like legacy games. I'm super excited. Um, my inner seven-year-old boy, I always talk about that. And he's like, cool, dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe you're in this. <laughs> so I'm very excited. Um, Owl House, we do have a season three, um, which is more like specials. So Owl House for Disney. Uh, if you haven't checked out Usagi Chronicles, that's a good one. Um, trying to think. Music, guys. Melalee.com. M-E-L-A-L-E-E.com. All things Mela, especially my music, um, free workshops. You can sign up to be on the newsletter uh, for that. And hmm, I guess appearances, newsletters. Go, go to melalee.com or follow me on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok, which okay. is the Melalee. I, I got fancy. <laughs> I just put a T H E in front of it. Yeah. Um, and just thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for supporting my career, for being so kind, and for being one of those new soul tribe people. Because we talked about it. We got some private conversations before this interview. Um, it's so lovely to have a redo where the world is a safe place and a welcoming place. Right. Thanks for being a part of that. Yeah, no problem. So the last thing I always do with every Fire Emblem interview is um, I have some, I have the, if they're, if they're okay with it, I have the voice actor say something in character. Okay. It's kind of funny. It's, it's one of her lines, but it's like a little funny thing added to it as to it. Your castle smells great. Is that deep dish pizza? Oh, well, it makes me so sleepy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. This was, uh, this was great. I'm glad that we can yes. finally uh, do something in person for the fire. Oh, love, brother. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.